Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to the September Craft Crates Halloween edition and it's all about ghosts this year. I am loving the craft crates and I am really loving about loving to hear all of the fun excitement that's happening um, from you guys getting ready to receive them here very soon. So I am going to do um, some step-by-step -step items with you guys while things are kind of drying. Um, I probably will have to stop for some of the videos and maybe do like some time lapse because we really um, have a lot of, we don't have a lot of new DIY um, boxes. So in a way it's kind of fun because um, you guys are total rock stars and you get it. And a lot of you guys are not even watching the videos anymore. So you probably don't even want to watch this um, because you know exactly what to do. So I'm going to go kind of a little bit quickly um, through all of these projects with you. And um, just to kind of give you a few little tips and tricks on if some of the items that um, we are going to be creating together. So if you, if I could turn the camera, I would right now, but everything is really starting to come together um, over to my left and um, it looks amazing. So um, I'll be taking some photos for you guys so you can see all that we have um what we've been working on and all that's coming your way. Um, well, mainly those are all the finished items. So, but let's go ahead and get started with your ghost. Everybody has um, a ghost, no matter what um, level of craft crate you chose to do. Um, if you upgraded to the ultimate, then you also have the option to upgrade to the um, ultimate upgrade bonus. And um, that gets you an additional um, large ghost and a mini ghost. So I'm gonna go over the ghosts with you, these two sizes. We are going to do um, most likely the girl ghost, or we're gonna do the girl ghost um, for the large ghost so that I can show you a little bit of how I did the shading on her pink cheeks and um, how to also, well, the rest of it you guys are pros at. It's making a bow and it's putting on the um, heart with some wood glue or glue of your choice. So let's go ahead and get started. So really all that we're gonna need for this is, um, is our white paint, assuming you're painting your ghosties white, and also um, black paint, your stencil and I'm gonna be honest I'm using my stencil here that has been used many 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 times and it looks a little bit um, crazy because I accidentally ripped it <laughs> to kind of re put it back together but you guys are pros with that so um, first up is we are going to go ahead and just paint with our sponge and um, I found that it was just easier to paint all of these puppies with um, my sponge just kind of facing down, triangle down, triangle down. I also found that even with my chalk paint, two coats was needed. Um, I felt like I probably could have gotten away with the one, but the second coat just really made it, I don't know sealed the deal for me, I guess you could put it that way. The other thing that I did do is I did go around the edges of the ghost and um, all around. You can choose to paint the back side or not. Um, that is completely up to you, personal preference. Um, I did paint the back side for our finished craft crate and you know what? I know better. This nice, cute new t-shirt. Finally, one thing that I now own that doesn't have um, paint on it. Let me go ahead and put a little grungy sweatshirt on here. A little warm in here, but that's okay. We'll survive. Um, I did go ahead and paint the back side. One thing that I do like to, to do is Hi, buddy. I'll talk to you in just a second. I love you. Um, is, I have a cold man who just walked in the door. 
I like to take my finger over the edges and um, the entire thing just to kind of smooth out the paint. And I know I'll show you what I mean with that in just a second. How can we start painting all of the edges? The other thing that I did do is I, on the very first coat, I only painted half of the edges so that I kind of had somewhere to um, kind of grab onto. So what I meant by that is I like to take my finger and just like slowly smooth it out. It just kind of helps get rid of any lines and um, the one thing that I love, I, I chose, I asked for this wood, I asked for this wood specifically for the ghost because I didn't want it to be rustic and roughed up. I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. So I like to just take my finger and just kind of smooth it out. And I might be the only person in this whole world that does that, but it works well for me and it's good too. So there we go. There is coat number one. I'm gonna do coat number one on this guy here. And I said I'm gonna do the same half. And then we paint the back side or the second coat on. Then we will hit the rest of the sides as well. Like that. All right, so we're going to I'll be back with you guys in just a bit after this um, dries. You will want to go ahead and do as many coats as you need to or would like to. Um, I am going to do a second coat of the white on here. And um, I probably will, and I am going to do the back side as well. And then we will get on here. I'll show you, um, we'll do the eyes and the nose, to, or the eyes and mouth together. And then I will show you the tick marks on how I did that. It's with a black Sharpie. And um, then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how I did the cheeks and the rest of it. So I'll be back in a bit. So originally I thought that I was recording, but I guess I wasn't. And I am now just showing you how I added the face on the ghost. Just go ahead and grab your stencil. I did put two coats of black paint on there on each of the ghost faces. Then when the little ghosty for the boy, you do have a stencil for him. You can go ahead and put him down that stencil and give it two coats. Here I am now showing you how to do the um, eyelashes the on the, the girl bottom, ghost. Uh, straight out of the bottom and I kind of go with the eye. And then, you see the guide, I go a little bit longer. And then a little bit straight and up. I also gave her um, some lines on her face, just, you know, like that. So that is the eyes. So I'm gonna do the rest of them really, really quick. Um, here. There you go, she's gonna have a little bit longer. Brush. 
um, but I'm going to show you guys what I did do so that maybe if any of you have it or something like it, you can use it because you can definitely um, do other use other ways of doing it. But I'm just going to show you. So I did a little round. Do you see this little brush? It's like a little little brush. I probably had this brush for like six years forever long. It was like one of the first things that I got in my stocking um, from my mother-in-law when I started to paint. She loves to paint and so she was really excited about it. And um, so what you do is you get just a tiny little bit of paint on your brush. Like I just barely dab it in there. And then what you're going to do is my little water cups over here. Um, you're going to actually like rub it off, dab it off on a napkin or a cloth. And you really just don't want much on there at all. And this is also how you do like dry brushing if you're doing um, just giving something like some color to make it look like it's watercolor or not watercolor, but um, like just a, you know, you want to go really lightly on something to give it like some dimension and color. That's the best way of doing it. So then, as you guys can see, she has her little dimples in here. And I'm just going to like kind of dab it. But you can absolutely do this with like your, um, your sponge. But I'm just showing you how I did all of the ones that I did. And there she is. She has a couple little dimples on there. So the only other thing that she needs is her little. And um, about two weeks ago, I cracked my implant that I have there, right? Not my big tooth, but right next to it. Um, I don't have any idea how I did it. The only thing I can think of is that my retainer that I am supposed to wear often, and I actually do because I'm so scared that my teeth are going to be jacked up. I think that because my teeth are moving, the whole side of my mouth is, is collapsing because my roof of my mouth is basically all man-made, and um, it's just kind of deteriorating, which is really scary. <laughs> um, they don't... Honestly, they don't know what they're going to do and how to fix it, and it's going to be really expensive, it sounds like. So, in the meantime, I have to get, my, I'm having to get a new tooth implant, but the problem is, is the post that they had to take bone marrow out of my hips when I was, um, like 12 to start growing the bone marrow start growing the marrow at the top of my roof so that they had enough bone up there in order for this the rod to survive and, and um, last and unfortunately it's not so it could be the fact that it cracked because it's not accepting it anymore or what but anyways I had to have it taken off today and they're trying to figure out how to fix it and um it's just kind of a mess. So, um, I had to come home and just take a little nap and <laughs> try to put myself together to get on here because I don't want you guys waiting on me. Um, so I just went ahead and I put the bow on. I just glued it on with a hot glue gun. And then there's one other thing that we're going to do, um, with this heart. If you upgraded, um, upgraded and you have the two um and there's two ways of doing it uh you can do the glue gun but in this case i found it actually best to do the um, the e6000 glue so long story short i think that my mouth and dental work is going to be a very long journey and um I'm not really looking forward to it. So I'm hoping that they'll have an answer and they'll figure it out. But um, <laughs> so far I haven't had any good news. So I'm planning for something good to be coming my way because um, it's really expensive right now and really nobody knows what to do. So hopefully there is some doctor out there that can figure out how to help me.
me because um, if not, I'm not going to have any teeth left on the side of my mouth, and that's not cool, and I'm not going to be able to function like that. So we'll work it out, I'm sure. I have faith in that. Um, so here's our girl. Bring them until I was able to make sure that she has one. So I'm sending this to her. They live in... Oh, where did they move to? They were stationed here, and then he... Um, He was a SEAL, and now they're in Indiana because he is at um, whatever big college, Notre Dame, for his, like, grad school and all that. So, but my sweet, sweet cousin's little baby girl so sweet. She's not really a baby, but I'm going to call her that. She is, like, a little spitfire, and she was born with her um, leg backwards basically so basically at her hip her joint is backwards so she has um, a prosthetic and um, she is a fierce little thing man a little fighter how can you say no to that when they call you and say I want one of those There. Okay, so for the girls, um, I just drew their little face in. You will receive something, but I could not get what I made for the girls to be exact. Um, because of how I drew it and even when I would draw it with my Apple Pencil and download it it just wasn't the same it wouldn't cut properly so I'm still trying to figure that out so basically um, for the eyes I just do almost like a longer S okay and then extra little tail so I can try to put this down a little so it's always op hard to do the opposite but so that's what we're doing Been over and we're gonna go like that and then it's just a little smile face with it like so I know you guys can do that I have faith in you for that so that is how I did it I'm sorry that it's not exactly one of those things that I could not draw a small enough, skinny enough, and then have it cut properly. So I did send you with um, a girl stencil, but if you want it to be exact, that's how I did it. And it's pretty easy, and I'm sure you guys could do it. So here we go. This is for little Anastasia. family here. So I'm just going to do the rest of these. And, you know, with the, the little like blushy on the face, it's not perfect circles. Just get a little bit of product on there. Around as it dries and it's all good because it says blush you don't need it to be absolutely perfect all right so they're done and um, hopefully that helps if you have any questions as always just let me know and I will do whatever I can to answer them uh, show you
All right, have a good night. I'm going to bed. It's like really early, but I'm going to bed now. <laughs> I'll talk to you all later. All right, so I want to also show you a little bit up close on how I did the tick marks. I think that this video would be much better than the one that I originally had, and I went ahead and just cut it out for you. Um, I do use a Sharpie. I like to have my corners um, almost like a, a half of a triangle so that you can really kind of make those corners out a little bit more distinct. And then I just go around and give it the tick marks all the way around. Honestly, the fun thing about the ghost is it really doesn't matter what um, order you do any of this project. You can do any of it at any time. And as you guys can see, it's a lot of cuts that we have in a lot of different videos um, because I've had to stop and go so many different times with um, the ghost project. And um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a better showing on how I did them. So hopefully this will help. And if you have any questions, um, please reach out. But I think that you guys are probably good to go on this and may not even need the video at all. But I can't wait to see how they all turn out and hope you enjoy them.